Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Good morning, Jay and Melissa. Thank you for joining me here in Dallas, Texas, as I broadcast live on an FM platform across the nation. You guys, count, you're here to talk about pills gone bad. That's really <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yes, I, we know that you can go into any medicine cabinet in any home in America, and, and folks are going to have leftover uh, medication in there, and, and that poses some fairly obvious safety risk of kids or pets getting into those. And we know as we deal with this opioid crisis in the United States that a lot of folks who begin experimenting with pain medication, their first access to those is to find leftover pain medications uh, in a medicine cabinet at a home. Melissa, when pills have gone bad uh, uh, and there's a question about it, uh, can we take them back to the store? Uh, in some instances, you can take them back to the store. Um, NABP has got a website and the web address is safe.pharmacy. And on that website, patients can look up to see where they can bring their medications back. And in many cases, it will be to a pharmacy. So all they have to do is go to that homepage and type in their zip code or their city and state, and the results will show up uh, as to whether or not there is a disposal site near them. Now, the good thing is, is that we've got 8,000 disposal locations in that database, and we're adding more every week, so chances are good that patients are going to be able to find something close by. Can we dispose of them? Because, you know, we have take back your, your, your meds day, they call it something like that, but that, that's maybe once every six months or something like that. That's, this, that's exactly right. Take back days, and in fact, there's one coming up in October. Those are great one-time events uh, to get rid of medications, but what we'd like to, folks to do is thinking, think about doing that year-round and not save up leftover medications to dispose of once a year, but to get in the habit of getting rid of those extra medications throughout the year. Okay. Let me take this question, and you guys, I know you already have an answer. <laughs> what about people when they just basically flush their medications down the toilet? How is this impacting us? Well, some folks do do that, and there are certain very dangerous medications. If you've got a leftover an opioid or a fentanyl, uh, some drugs that are they're so dangerous, if someone gets hold of them, it, it could kill, uh, kill them. In that case, it, it might be the best option if you don't have a nearby uh, disposal facility to flush them. But in general, we like folks to avoid flushing medications if they can, because obviously it gets into the groundwater, and we'd like to avoid that. I want my audience to know that Jay Campbell is the executive director of the North Carolina Board of Pharmacy, and Melissa Madigan is the policy and communications director for NABP. NABP. So you guys are getting some great information directly from the sources. Melissa, why do you what, why do we need to uh, know about take back your medications day and how to dispose of them? What's the overall impact? Well, the overall impact is to reduce accessibility of these dangerous medications to your family and friends that are visiting your home. I believe that's a great way. Uh, let me ask you, Jay, are we responsible for, some, for our medications? Let me just say some little kid comes over my house and takes the medications out of the cabinet. Are we, are we actually responsible or liable for that? You could be. I don't want to get into the, uh, the lawyer part of that. But, yes, I mean, and apart from the, the liability piece, of it, it's just part of being a good neighbor and a good family member and a good member of the community to do what we can to avoid those kinds of things happening. Online, uh, Melissa, is there a place that my audience can go and get more information? Yes, so the information we just discussed along with extra tips is available at safe.pharmacy. And I asked about giving other people medication because I see people do this all the yep. time, and I'm always I just cringe. Yeah, it's 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 neither a safe nor an appropriate thing to do. I mean, you understand it. You have extra medication. A friend or a neighbor says, "Well, I've got the same symptoms you had. Do you mind if I just borrow those?" Never a good idea. Those medications weren't prescribed for that other person. You don't know whether they'll work for that other person and that other person could suffer some harm as a result of that. So good intentions there, but not the safest practice to engage in. Great disclaimer and a good way to wrap up the Valder Beebe Show. I want to thank you, Melissa Madigan and Jay Campbell, for this great information. You may have saved someone's life. Thank you for being my guest on the Valder Beebe Show. Thanks so much thank for having so us, much. Valder.
Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I host the Valder Beebe Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is My Phone Pouch. My Phone Pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com. Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, host of the Valder Beebe Show. I have used Credit Help USA the credit restoration company that's bonded and state certified. When you become a client of Credit Help USA, you become eligible for a set of stainless steel cookware from Credit Help USA and the Valder BB Show. Get your credit straight today. Visit credithelptx.com, click on the Valder BB Show icon, and get started living life divinely. <laughs>